Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I think I'm going to aim to put that station around Ike, since we're doing our station building thing and it'll make sense to uh, sort of try and complete the stations first. And also we have a plan of flag on Ike contract, so we should have a station that's capable of sending out a, a lander of some kind. So, uh, and possibly a vessel that can return Kerbals back to Kerbin. So, uh, the sort of a rescue vessel uh, that can also do the Ike landing would be good. So, uh, yeah, new orbital station around Ike. Possibly, possibly what will happen is I'll put it around Ike first, and then I'll transfer it out to Duna orbit instead, is uh, probably my plan. Uh, it needs uh, the usual power antenna docking port uh, facility supporting at least 10 Kerbals. And uh, that's it. So it's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, I don't think I'll try and use the same one I did for Jewel. Let's try and make it a little bit more unique. Uh, in particular, I think I'll use some of the new parts that I've unlocked. Uh, we'll see what I, what I can do. All right. So uh, let me head over to the VAB and take care of the building process. Okay. Well, this is one of those things where I'm not even sure if it's a good idea to bring it out to the launch pad. But, um, well, here we go. Uh, this is the station. Uh, somebody mentioned that I should use the new little adapters. These have fuel in it, and they look a lot better than the other adapters, uh, these Rocket Max brand adapters, so definitely a good good idea. This has a probe core on top to control it, and um, otherwise we're at the part limit, so I had to strip down quite a lot of parts, uh, though I did add some amenities. Uh, these just move out the lines. The batteries are here. And we've also got two cupola modules, as you can see. And so that's a major amenity that we totally don't need. But uh, but yeah, another amenity is the little uh, rungs going all the way down, which add to the part count. But um, anyway, I, I think it'd be better to give some give the Kerbal some support on EVA, for instance. Uh, of course, we've got the always open panels just in case, but we've also got the large solar panels on the side here. Um, this only has these Rockmax 2477s. It's really not meant to move itself around too much. It does have a lot of monopropellant and plenty of RCS ports around the center of mass. Center mass is around here, of course. Um, and then here's the lander. And in fact, uh, to transfer to Duna, it'll be lander's engine, which is this LV-909 that does most of the work. And so hopefully this will all uh, stay rigid, but uh, if there's any problem, we'll have to redock it on this side, turn it all around, and then try and push it that way. That'll be tough, but uh, otherwise I don't know if uh, we really have enough fuel in this. We're not carrying too much fuel with us, and uh, we'll have to add a f additional fuel module to the station later on if it's going to refuel the derrick, for instance. But yeah, the lander itself has plenty of delta V. Um, it's just the part where it's pushing the station that it's not really got enough. Well, it's got enough, but not a whole lot extra. But uh, yep, so one Kerbal, and we're only going to send one Kerbal so that we can do the planet flag mission. Otherwise, the station will be unmanned, uncurbled, I guess. And then the really tricky part is the Koyu's launcher. Now, as recommended by uh, somebody in the comments, I forget who it was, um, uh, I've put the probe core on the side. Probably better not to point out who it was, just in case this doesn't work very well. Um, uh, remember, it was in line and we had also sorts of structural problems. Of course, uh, we still have quite a lot of structural problems going on here, uh, but with the lander here, but... Yeah, uh, at least maybe the Koyus won't have too much wiggle in it because this is on the side instead of on the top in line. Uh, we've still got all the parachutes, plenty of part count there. And then of course uh, at the base, the uh, KR-2L and then the mainsails. Um, whether this can land safely or not, I don't know. Uh, we are going to have to try and find out. The last time I launched this was in... Point, uh, 0.25 so we're trying it now in 0 0.90 and I don't know if it's going to hold on a sec I think I can offset this a little bit speaking of 0 0.90 let's tuck that in a little bit more okay uh, so yeah uh, we could probably do a little bit more work on this Koyu's in 0.90 it doesn't have to look this way of course I've designed other things that have similar pods on the side that look a little bit better 
So I'll think about that. But for now, this is uh, what we're going to go with, and we'll see. It, it, the Koyus itself should have enough delta V to get to orbit just fine. Um, then it's all up to this. The question is whether it is all stable. Uh, I've already time warped to the Ike uh, phase angle, well, the Duna phase angle. So we're there. Um, all right, well, uh, let's see who we're going to put in the lander. Uh, for some reason, Jeb is in the cupola module. How did that happen? No. Um, oh, so since I upgraded to 0 0.90, I haven't really given them any experience, have I? That's trouble. I don't want to send Jib on this one, and he's the only pilot. But uh, do we need, well, planning a flag, I th guess we can do that with a pilot, right? We don't need an engineer to plan a flag, do we? But I don't want to send Jib, and he's our only pilot. Uh, I know in this series I had originally said that we would only uh, get Kerbals that uh, are stranded in space and rescued. But since, but that was without the pilot engineer scientist distinction. Now that we have this distinction, I think we need to hire another pilot. Besides, we haven't really gotten many new contracts for rescuing Kerbals. So, Elliot, no, that's pretty straightforward. Bill Rick, Renand, I don't like the sound of that. Erden Kerman, that sounds good. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Bill Rick, anyway, let's hire some uh, Malden. Malden Kerbin. I think that that's about right. Okay, let's go back. So I think uh, we are going to send Elliot. Elliot Kerman will be our Kerbal for this mission. And, uh, well, uh, we'll have to train Jeb up a little bit more before we send him out. Okay, here we are with Elliot. Who it's a little bit wiggly. You can see that from the nav ball, but you can also see that just visually a little bit of wiggle there. Um, yeah, let's let's go and then I'll talk about other stuff. Okay, throttle up. Are you ready, Elliot? Here it goes. Okay, well, plus side, the launch pad did not explode. That is good. That is a good start. Okay, so uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, somebody brought up that I should name my stations a little bit more cleverly, and I accept that, that is true. I've uh, thought up a naming convention. The initial suggestion was uh, the islands from the Odyssey, but I, I don't want to give the impression that my Kerbals are all wayward and uh, trying to find their way home. No, uh, they're, they're out on missions, uh, very definitely meant to go to the locations that they are. They're not accidentally bumping into them on the way back. So, yeah, let's. Uh, I don't think that's the right impression. So, uh, I decided that the island motif was good for stations, the islands in space. It's uh, very appropriate. Um, that left a number of possibilities in terms of island groups to pick from. And I think I'm going to go with the Japanese islands the main islands. Uh, we're not going to build too many stations and I think that would be that would be a good way to go. So that's my current idea and we'll go with the renaming later on in the episode at the end assuming all this works. I, was, I also thought about the Hawaiian Islands but I'm a little bit less confident about consistently pronouncing their names properly than I am with the Japanese islands so that's how that worked uh, of course Philippine Islands came to mind uh, Indonesia came to mind you know also thought about the islands that Captain Cook discovered but somehow Tahiti Station didn't really have the right ring to it New Zealand Station doesn't sound too bad actually but maybe it should be New New Zealand Station Anyway, okay, starting to attempt to turn here. Gotta be careful, obviously. You can see there is wiggles. Now I've got all the fuel feeding into the center, 
I don't know if that's a good idea. I think maybe we'll be short of thrust at some point, but we'll see. It is not an ideal turn here. Uh, it's the best I can do without uh, risking ripping this thing apart. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's see where we are at. I'm not that high, actually. Let's keep going. Okay, still very wiggly. Of course, part of this is connected through docking ports, so. Uh, the lander in particular, of course. Uh, just a. Uh, docking port and a stack separator there. So I don't know how much fuel we can keep in reserve. Uh, let's hold on, hold on. We're going way off here. And I can barely try and turn towards prograde. There is no reserve capacity here. None of the tanks is shut off or anything. And the first priority is definitely to get the mission into orbit. No kidding, right? Well, I'll call that a stable orbit. Can we do any more? Oh, we got this whole tank here. Okay, 100 is fine. Alright, well, 100 by 168. Not, not the orbit I was looking for, but uh, sometimes you take the orbit you can get. Okay. And we have some fuel left over, and that's, that's excellent. I'm gonna safely decouple by going like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, well. Right, and let's just maneuver forward using the copious amounts of RCS we have in this thing. So here it is, the, the station getting ready to be transferred out. Lighter than I thought it was. I thought it was 40 tons. More than 40 tons, in fact. Still have not unlocked action groups. I know somebody suggested using the like the abort and other stuff as action groups for this sort of thing, but I don't think it's necessary. Okay, and I'm gonna manually activate this engine. Okay, this thing looks ready to go. Elliot is in orbit. Now, <laughs> uh, now the tricky part, uh, at least uh, in terms of recovering funds. So I'm gonna say at this periapsis, I'm gonna try and retro burn. You know, it looks like the probe core is actually pointing us in the right direction. What is it con hmm. That's interesting. I thought it'd be off somehow. The nav ball in particular. Okay. Well somewhere around there is the right number. Wouldn't like to hit the mountains. But well we'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, let's turn off the main sails. So, what is the mass of this thing right now? 127.9 tons. Hmm, hmm. Okay, let's see. We're looking for 34,000 meters in altitude as we cross the coastline. Might get that, might not get that. No, it seems to me we're a little bit high. Probably not a good idea to risk hitting water. Hopefully that'll be alright. If I did too much, we'll be hitting rough terrain. 
we seem to be a little bit off of the right inclination for the KSC. And I think we're actually just going to barely clear the mountains. We're going to land around here somewhere. And second volley. Okay, gear down. Okay. I think the program just didn't bother to make the sound for parachute deployment because there was so many of them it couldn't handle it. Oh, 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 Reco uh, oh. Recover vessel? It worked! It worked! I mean, and it wasn't exactly the smoothest terrain, but we got. It actually started to tip over, but then it recovered itself, it looked like. Okay, so how much did we recover from that? Uh, wow, 246,000 funds. Well, good thing that we got that back, huh? Uh, and uh, reasonably close to the KSC, at least. Uh, but yeah, wow, almost 250,000 funds. All right, let's get back to the Ike mission. Okay, so here we are. Not looking bad at all, I think. Looks like a proper spacecraft, that's for sure. Okay, so we've got a pretty easy encounter here. That's the bright side. Downside is we don't have much thrust to weight ratio, and we're gonna have to try that out in a sec here. But yeah, I think we need to go now. <sighs> Okay, actually, we're going to go around. I'm going to boost here for about five minutes, and then I'm going to go around and then uh, boost again. Well, if you don't want to carry a lot of huge engines, at least it looks stable. No wiggles or anything. Definitely satisfactory from that department. Okay, we're about to run out of the lander's own fuel here. And that'll be it for the first burn. And so we can transfer fuel. Remember there's a stack separator between them. And I've got a fuel line running from the top to the lander. No point in that. So I'm just going to transfer fuel. We've got about 670 meters per second to go. And I think just uh, one more tank full will do it. But uh, we'll have to replot this just to make sure. So we're going to orbit around curve in here and I'm gonna replot this one. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting too long darn it I <sighs> was thinking about something completely different as usual maybe I'll go around one more time because I started this burn late okay transferring some more fuel Hold on, let me let the fuel transfer first. I want to see what's actually going on with the with the orbit. All right, and we're pretty close to the end of this burn. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's use some of our RCS to see how close we can get. Oop. Wow, actually the RCS is a little bit overpowered for this sort of thing. Hmm, not too close. Okay, well, we can wait until we get to the ascending node there and correct whatever else we need to correct to get closer than 1,400 kilometers. Let us have Elliot Kerman proceed out of Kerman SOI. I had a bit more Delta V than I thought I did, though we still have to reserve a bit of fuel for the actual landing and planting a flag and all that. Okay, looking pretty good. Still looking more like a ship than a station, but I guess if I'm not going to put stuff inside fairings, that's just going to be how it is. Because you got to cuz, you know, smooth nose, uh smooth out lines, you're not going to end up with a ship-like thing rather than a station-like thing. They haven't even bothered giving me a moon station contract, have they? 
guess I was far enough ahead in this series that uh, they thought that would be trivial, but uh, we really do need to put something around... M m well, maybe, maybe not, depending on how you look at it. Maybe we should just focus on interplanetary missions. Whoa, whoa. Huh, that was a lot farther than I thought we'd be going. Huh. Okay, well, let's just use RCS to fix this. Okay, well, whatever. If it's not going to let me do it, then maybe I'm just not thinking straight right now. Let's get into Dunosphere of Influence. 1,400 kilometers is not bad. And we have to hit Dyke anyway. So we need a... Well, we, we do need to air break around Duna. That's definitely part of the plan. Okay, Duna Sphere of Influence. We are going around the. Well, no, we're going check marked, so that's not the right way. <laughs> well, an Ike encounter before we air break doesn't really matter much. Nice try, Ike. Well, let's do this uh, correction first, and then we'll work on our actual periapsis. So this one worked. Except we're now on a crash course with Duna. And we can't use air braking calculator if we've got a crash course with Duna. So let's fix that. Okay. So let me see what our air braking altitude should be. Okay, it gives me 13,445 to have an apoapsis around uh, Ike's orbit. So, just need to go towards the opposite radial node, I'm sure. That should be fine. Okay. Now, if something horrible should happen, of course, uh, Elliot will decouple from all this and use his parachutes and thrust to make a landing on Duna and then he'll be stranded well he won't be stranded on Duna actually he's probably got actually one thing we should do is uh, make sure that he's topped off and then uh, he'll probably be able to get back into orbit all on his own again okay looks all streamlined for for atmospheric insertion so before Elliot gets back to Kerbin, we're gonna have to train uh, Jeb up because it's gonna be no good having Elliot all experienced and Jeb being a novice. So uh, we'll have to hold off before bringing Elliot back. He'll have to hang out here around Duna and Ike for a while. And of course, uh, you might say, well, I should just send uh, Jeb on this mission, but I really was afraid of the whole uh, thing exploding on the launch pad. Uh, so, I mean, it is a big craft and and that sort of thing can happen. Now, not that Elliot's life is any less precious than Jeb's. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, Jeb is iconic and uh, it would uh, diminish the morale of the entire agency. And I'm sure Elliot understands that. Besides, he, he's getting the benefit of actually going on this mission. I mean, Jeb actually landed on Duna, for heaven's sakes, right there. Look. He just hasn't gotten credit for it. It's just not fair. So. Bill landed on Ike. Well, that's not going too bad, actually. I don't even know if we're going to get... Actually, what's happening is we would have gotten into Duna orbit, but Ike is actually slingshotting us. Ike, uh, this is actually causing us to exit out because Ike is uh, giving us a boost. But this saves us a transfer, the cost of transferring to Ike. Uh, we'll, we'll be fine. I think this is ideal. Beyond all expectations. 
there's Ike, and we're headed straight for it. Well, curved for it, but that's straight in space. In uh, space with gravitational influences. Looks pretty stable now, about 205 kilometers away from Ike. I'll take that. Okay, we're in Ike's sphere of influence, and orbit will cost us... Well, let's make it loose. It's a station and everything. Let's give it to about 200 kilometers, and that'll cost us 200 meters per second or thereabouts. Okay, we're a little bit off, but that is orbit, and I'll keep it right there, I think. So, let us uh, neutralize controls, turn SAS off, and we're done. We've got, uh, we've got a station around Ike. So, uh, I think, so I said uh, we're going to name it after the islands of Japan. And that's, that's fair enough. They have a good sound to them. So this will be uh, Shin Kyushu, I think. Uh, should Kyushu be this one? No, this, this uh, so Honshu will be the one around Kerbin. And then I guess uh, Hokkaido, I mean, Hokkaido's pretty big, so I guess the Jewel Station will be good for that. Uh, so yeah, I guess Shin Kyushu. And it still has uh, enough juice to get back into Duna orbit, but we'll leave it here for now because of the mission with uh, Elliot. Let me rename the other stations quickly. Okay, so all done. So this is Shin Honshu Station, uh, New Honshu Station in other words, and then uh, the one around Jewel is Shin Hokkaido, and uh, the one around Ike and eventually around Duna is uh, Shin Kyushu. So we've got the Shikoku to deal with and probably that should be either around Eve or the Moon. Can't decide which. Probably will depend on a contract. And then we'll have the four main islands of Japan covered. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we'll make large space stations elsewhere. We need to build these up anyway. They, they should have more facilities than they currently do right now. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, uh, let's go back to the Space Center for a sec. So I think I'll leave it here for this episode. Uh, I, I'm out of time to try and bring, bring Elliot to the surface of Ike, and I, I probably want to think about uh, whether I want to leave him there or bring him back. And we've got a lot of other things to think about as well. Our contract situation is that we've got a Drez Gilly. We need to plant the flag on Ike, of course, and explore Tylos. So lots of spread out stuff to do. Uh, we need to plant a flag on Minmus. You know what, I'll, I'll pick that up as a way to uh, give uh, Jeb some, some sort of a boost. Um, build a new orbital station around Elu. Huh. I, maybe that should be an Okinawa station. Because <laughs> Elu is pretty far out, right? I mean, uh, Okinawa is pretty far out. Maybe I could name that Okinawa station. Build a new surface outpost on Lathe. What does a surface outpost need? Uh, all the stuff, basically all the stuff, and a viewing cupola even. Wow. Okay, well we're getting into some serious stuff here. And so I'll, I'll ponder this stuff. Uh, we've got two uh, contract slots left there. Uh, but uh, 20 years to do this one. All right, anyway. But uh, we managed to put the station around Ike, and more importantly for me, we managed to land the Koyu's rocket safely, which uh, gave us the 250,000 funds back. So maybe we have a reusable launcher for 40 ton loads. That seems to be what we've got there, and if, if that's true, then uh, we're in good shape. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.